What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we are back for day three of that San Diego Comic-Con at home recap. Kind of unusual. Everyone's getting acclimated to this at home online Comic-Con. It's a little bit different, but it just wasn't that typical Saturday like you would normally have at San Diego Comic-Con, was it, Jack? No, normally Saturday is all about the hustle and bustle and rapid fire news hitting the internet. This was a little bit more of a whimper, but either way, you're talking about a multitude of panels, so much content going on at one time, at all times from San Diego Comic-Con, and we are going to break down what we feel like is relevant to the Simple Men's Comics family. Right, so we're going to break it down for you. There was a bunch of panels, but we're going to highlight the most important ones, like Jack said, that we think Simple Men's Comics family wants to see. And the first one we're going to talk about is that DC Comics at Home Day 2. Yeah, this has definitely been one of the more informative panel series that I've seen at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, they've tried to really give you a look inside where the publishing arm of DC Comics is going um, in the near future. Today's really focused on Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, the duo behind DC's Dark Knight's Death Metal series. And they talked about kind of what has gone into the first two issues as well as what to expect. The biggest nugget of information that I think the comic buying community is gonna care about is the fact that we know that Robin King is coming in issue three. And Scott Snyder talked about how um, this is a very, very evil character, a merciless killer, a character who brags to Alan Scott about having murdered his children in another world and used their ashes uh, to create a Black Lantern ring so that he could then defeat him. So, and this is a 10 year old child. So this is uh, um, a, a seriously dark character coming to the DC universe. And um, really the panel did its job to get me more excited about that character and um, his possibility for success on the secondary market. So there it is. Everyone keeps asking, hey, when's Robin King going to show up? We kind of had hints of it in issue two, but there you have it. Issue three is definitely going to be that debut issue. But another great panel. We're big fans of Boom Studios. We're big fans of Power Rangers. We all know that Draken New Dawn is coming up, but they had a panel about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The future is now. And what all took place during that? Right. Mighty Morphin uh, Power Rangers The Future Is Now panel was presented by Bloom Studios, and the purpose of it was to really talk about these two upcoming ongoing series that Bloom Studios is going to be bringing, Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. Now, we're used to hearing those together, but with the various Power Ranger teams in the expanded Power Ranger universe, it really there's been too much action for just one book and we've seen that play out within the necessary evil storyline as well as shattered grid so now we're going to spawn off into two books uh, with mighty morphin number one and power rangers number one so we have the creative teams as well as some of the actors behind the uh power rangers characters that give inspiration uh to the book and it was really cool very informative um Definitely got Power Ranger fans hype, and we got a glimpse into a new character showing up, uh, a Black Time Force Ranger, a female character. Um, I wasn't necessarily familiar with the Time Force Rangers, but it got all of the panelists hype, so that was something that definitely I took note of, so be on the lookout for that. Did they hint, is it issue one, or just hint that it's coming up? Hint that it's coming. Didn't get didn't get an issue uh, answer on that one. Then we also there's been rumors. You've seen little nuggets of information on Twitter on all the comic book websites that people follow. But we had a panel for Constantine celebrating that 15th anniversary. The movie that didn't exactly follow the comic book, but was still great nonetheless. I'm talking Al Pacino. You're talking Keanu Reeves, whose star is shining as bright as it possibly can be. But we had that 15th anniversary panel. What all took place during that? Well, yeah, and, and Keanu was certainly busy with uh, San Diego Comic-Con today with two panels, one for Bill and Ted, and then this Constantine 15th anniversary. But we got a little bit of the backstory of how this movie came to be and how it was originally a project for Nicolas Cage and then got put on the shelf. Um, Keanu Reeves was brought in. He admitted he was not familiar with Constantine, but he also kind of flexed his muscle when he was mentioning um, – at, you know, Hellblazer and Alan Moore's epic run on Swamp Thing. So he let he let everyone know that he's paying attention to comics. And certainly that's something um, that we know to be the case now with his upcoming Boom Studios series, Berserker, on the way. Um, so 
Keanu uh, was, you know, skeptical about playing the role because obviously this is a blonde haired British character traditionally. Um, and so he had some trepidations going into the role, but you know, the biggest news coming out that you're seeing headlines talked about is a possible sequel. And, and what really was said was the producer was asked about a sequel and said, um, they've had a sequel ready to go for years, for over a decade. Um, they wanted to move the franchise into a hard R and he felt like the stories with heaven and hell could be told with Keanu Reeves and in that kind of a, a landscape. Unfortunately, it seems like the movie is a victim of its time coming out kind of pre-Batman Begins and the whole MCU superhero explosion. Uh, it didn't get the benefit of those times. Wasn't commercially successful or critically successful at the time. And because of that, the studio has not shown interest in renewing it. So we'll have to see. But they did mention they could go tomorrow if called upon. So those were the panels we wanted to highlight. But we also, like at the beginning of this video, we said it wasn't your typical Saturday, especially from the news cycle. Yes, there was a bunch of great panels. I can take anything away from the panels, but you didn't have that hype, that buzz that you normally do on Saturday. Jack, you were, seems like you were glued to YouTube watching these panels. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. My biggest takeaway is, the, is that I was disappointed in the publisher panels. Um, every one of my favorite publishers had panels uh, specifically driven to where their publishing arm of their company is going in the future, whether it's an independent comic company or um, one of the big comic companies, everybody was represented. And, and I think that, and it's very representative of the views on YouTube, um, which frequently are less on a lot of these panels than we're even receiving on our wrap up videos that you're watching right now. Um, the, the content isn't entertaining. Um, the, the information isn't actually what the comic buying community wants to know. Um, I think that DC Comics did a wonderful job, definitely hyping first appearances in day one. In day two, they did a deep dive into their hottest story. Um, I think that is the kind of stuff that drives the comic buying community. But I watched a number of panels where um, I, you know, I, I hate to call somebody out, but I watched an IDW panel where they spent the whole time talking to the uh, editor in chief about his philosophy on where he's taking the company and then he no longer works there. Uh, so it, as the video is now kind of outdated um, and they didn't really talk about specific titles and there's so many properties that I would have loved to have known what to expect from GI Joe, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or some of their great creator owned properties. Um, you know, the, the Marvel panel um, just didn't seem to have the punch that it had previous years. And I feel like what happened was, is when the transition went from the traditional, um, you know, halls of San Diego Comic-Con and the convention center to this online format, I think, Brian, a lot of people just um, didn't know what to expect and they punted a bit and they didn't necessarily... Um, bring the same presentation you would see at San Diego. And I think they missed an opportunity because at San Diego, you can only play to the audience that fits in that convention center. And we know from YouTube that you're speaking to an infinite audience and had these publishers really tried to break news and, and try to deliver an entertaining, um, you know, a, a showcase of what they've got, they could have the entire comic YouTube community glued to their panels and instead um they're not doing that and most would rather watch a short recap video at the end of the day i was just about to say i'm kind of that's a good thing about them doing it that way because that way we get to do what we do we do that recap we read the tea leaves try to pull as much information out of those panels that way we can highlight those what's important what what we think our audience wants to see and we hope you, the viewer, are getting that information without having to sit through 40, 30 hour long panels. And just like Jack said, with some of the information just isn't good. And they had some canceled, uh, they had some canceled panels like Dynamite. I know canceled theirs. They have that great crossover coming up, Dynamite. And we're looking yes. forward to that. I but, wanted to see that panel. That was, the, that was one of my disappointments of today. Yeah. But let us know in the comments, what do you guys think so far of San Diego Comic-Con? What do you think of it being online? I know it's not a different experience, but either way, I think more people get to experience it at the same time. And with that being said, guys, this is Brian Jackson from Men's Comics. And this is day three 
of that San Diego Comic-Con recap. We have day four coming tomorrow night. So if you're not, make sure you're subscribed, click that bell notification so you get notified when that video drops or other comic and pop culture related videos.